today's video, as you can see from the title, is all about dreaded revision. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back to another video. It feels so good to be making videos again. I know I was gone for a week. It's purely because I was literally stuck in like a coursework vortex, but I'm back now making content and it feels so good. So today's video, as you can see from the title, is about dreaded revision. No, God, please, no! We've all got to do it. None of us really like it, but it's just the way it goes. So I thought I would share with you my 10 tips on how I revise, just things that I do, ways that I've sort of picked up and things that have helped me learn uh, over the years. And I thought I'd share them with you to make the whole revision nightmare just that little bit easier. So I have split this video into three main parts. Firstly is planning, then it's doing, and then it's sort of like general at the end. So planning. So my first tip is get a calendar and write in all of your deadlines when you think you're gonna do things for. So like kind of like a revision timetable, just get something down so you can physically see when all your deadlines are, when your exams are, and that you can count down and plot on how much time you're gonna need for each task, each exam, and then you know really how to manage your time. Secondly is make a list of all the things that you need to cover for your exam. So for me this year, my exams are on EU law and public law, so I made a big list of all the subjects that we've covered throughout this year and my last year and making a big list is just so much easier for when I actually get onto my vision because I know what I need to cover, how much it's probably going to take, how long it's going to take and I can really really plan my time and I sort of use this tip I guess in conjunction with the calendar and sort of map out what I need to do and how long it's going to take. So for doing the one thing that I actually do pretty much all of the time, I do it throughout the year and I do it especially for exams, it's sort of my wall technique thingy. I did it in a video um, last year, but I kind of touched on it then, uh, I'll put the link in the description. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video purely on that revision technique. So that's like my main revision technique. But in this video, I'm just gonna touch on all the other things that I do alongside that. So yeah, when that video comes out, I'll put also put that in the description, but that's coming out very soon. So for revision tip three in doing, one of the things that I do and I love to do is blurting. So before I start a topic, I will blurt. I will basically write down on a scrap piece of paper, in my notebook, whatever, everything that I think that I know about that topic. And then I will check it with a textbook or with my online notes or what have you and see how much I actually know. And then when I finish the topic, I do exactly the same thing. You know, it's such a great task to do at the start of a revision day. It just gets you into the mindset, you know, and it really gives you sort of something to work towards because, you know, if you blurt, it comes very apparent whether you actually know things or not. And I think if you do that at the start of a revision session, then it sort of moves motivates you to crack on for that revision session and know what you need to actually do. And at the end of say doing a topic, blurting is such a great way to sort of consolidate all of your knowledge. And it's great, it's a great achievement actually to like blurt at the end and be like, oh, I actually know it. It gives you that sense of confidence. So blurting is the one. So for four, it is use your family and friends. So the amount of time I used to ring up my mum and be like, hey mum, can I tell you about the Defamation Act? Uh, hey mum, can I talk to you about parliamentary sovereignty? And I would just like talk her ear off and explain it to her. And obviously because she wouldn't know much about it, then it gives me an opportunity to tell her from scratch and she'll ask me questions and it will like confirm my knowledge of whether I do know it or don't know it. And you know, and how it applies to certain situations. And I just think teaching somebody else and saying, things out loud really really helps you know and understand what you're talking about and you know I think it's even better if you can find somebody on your course or a friend or something that especially knows what you're talking about you know if it's GCSEs or A-levels find somebody in your class talk to them and they'll be able to ask you directed questions that you know somebody who doesn't have a knowledge on it won't be able to ask you so it can really really test your knowledge and I just think it's a great way just saying stuff out loud is so helpful so for five this sort of touches on the this last point that I made but basically one of the big things I did especially in a level is I would record myself and then play it back so I sort of use this two ways um, firstly before I went on to a new topic I would read the whole topic of the textbook or the revision guide or whatever and I'd record myself into my phone just me reading the textbook chapter so at night I would put my headphones on and I would listen to the textbook and listen to myself on repeat like the whole night 
night. And then the next day when I woke up and I sort of started the new topic, I actually would kind of know bits and I'd be like, oh yeah, I thought I knew that. And I'd, there were things that just went into sort of my memory that you you know are so unaware of. And it might work for you, it might not, but for me, I just found it made picking up the information so, so much easier. The second way I used this was I would read out my revision notes to myself, like recording into my phone, and then I would ask myself questions and then I would have, I could leave a little gap so I can answer it. And then when I'm on runs and stuff, like I would listen to um, my recording and I'd be like running along and basically hear myself reading my revision notes. And then when it comes to myself asking the question, then when I'm on my run, I can like answer it. And it's just like a fun way that I used to find them um, to revise, especially because it's sort of, you can do a lot of other things whilst revising. So it's sort of a very good passive revision technique that I found. So for number six, another great technique that I use is prompts. So on my bathroom mirror, especially in exam season, I used to stick up like all questions and subject areas and things to test me. So like when I'm brushing my teeth, I can just look at them and sort of test myself or when I'm doing my makeup and things like that. So it's, you know, a way to revise uh, in a more fun way than like sitting at a desk. And it's especially things that I used to struggle at or I thought that I really needed that extra like revision time for. I used to stick them all up in my bathroom mirror. And by the end of a couple of days, you know, you'd know it like the back of your hand. So I just, I really like that technique. So number seven, this tip kind of relates to when you're actually sitting down doing the revision. Uh, I always use the Pomodoro technique. So if you're unfamiliar with the technique, basically you set a timer for 25 minutes, you work whatever in that time, whatever you need to do. And then once that timer goes off, then you have a five minute break and then repeat. And it's just a great way to really focus, sit down and dedicate your time and just really buckle up uh, for those 25 minutes because then you know that you get a little break. And I would say, my tip within this tip uh, and it's something that took me a long time to learn is when I used to do the Pomodoro technique and the time went off I would be like oh I don't need the break and trust me you actually do so after a few rounds you get so tired so when that five minute break comes leave your desk leave whatever you're doing go have a walk about take the break you know don't just sit on your phone the whole time like I used to do just just go and walk about and get the blood flowing uh, and then come back down and do another 25 minutes and I think that's the best way to use that technique so number eight, this is something that I started doing a lot in my second year of university. I kind of did it a bit um, for law A-level, but not really. But yeah, definitely second year of university. I do this all the time now. Uh, and it's use YouTube. I quite like like visual learning and, and like hearing people talk about it. So for me to watch a five minute YouTube video for someone to explain utilitarianism or what have you, I just find that so great. And especially now, like with my university in third term, I don't get any lectures I don't get any contact time so for me to have YouTube to basically get a teacher for free at the you know click of a button is a brilliant resource and especially for A level I know for A level there are so many videos out there going through the syllabus giving you revision tips for it so for me YouTube YouTube is literally the biggest revision resource that I think is so slept on so yeah and for my ninth tip it's sort of a two-in-one it is past papers and sort of mock exams so Go online, see if there's a spec, you know, for your course, try and find past papers, do them. I think that's the best way to look at how the markers are sort of looking for information and it's the best way to know how to structure your answers to get the most marks. And also like mock exams, and I mean this in the sense of make your own mock exams. I always do this the night before an exam because I just think it like calms my mind so much, but I think it's also a great thing to do throughout your revision time. So what I always do is once I've learned all the information or a topic or something, I would then make myself sort of an essay question. It would always be something very broad so that I can just chuck everything that I know down. Um, but it's something that I assume might come up on the exam. And then I go into, you know, exam style conditions in my bedroom and I put a timer on and I basically write down everything that I could possibly think, but in an exam sort of style format. So it's kind of different to blurting, but kind of similar. But with blurting, I guess you sort of just chuck everything down. Whereas this, I'm literally writing an essay or an actual exam question, how I would write it in the exam. And then I, you know, stop the timer, see how long it took me and review my answer to my textbook notes. This is my notes from, um, my exam last year, beautiful handwriting as you can see, and obviously I timed myself, so to do this, this answer was about contributory negligence and general negligence, I think, and basically it was like three A4 pages long, uh, and it took me 33 minutes. 
brilliant. So for the general section, my final tip, tip 10, and it is assess the way you're working as you go along. This is something that took me quite a while to sort of realize and something to sort of take into consideration when I was working. You know, like I used to try all of these different methods and tips out, but really it's about sitting down and thinking, is what I'm doing effective? You know, I've sat down for an hour. What have I done in that hour? Is it really constructive? And if it's not working, change it. Just because somebody online or somebody that you know in your class says to do this tip, if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, you know? Um, so yeah, just always be self-aware and conscious of the way you're working, what you're working, you know? And I think that keeps you very focused and disciplined. You know, for me, for example, with the Pomodoro technique, I was using it for a very long time and I was denying myself the breaks and quite frankly, it just meant that the, the technique wasn't working for me because I just wasn't doing it properly But as soon as I sat down and addressed, you know, actually if I took a five-minute break and actually walked around made a drink Whatever um, it would work a lot better and quite frankly it has worked brilliantly ever since so yeah Stay self-aware and assess the way that you're working and see if it's being effective And I think that's just the best way to really work smart and hard at the same time. So yeah, thank you for watching this video. This has been my top 10 revision tips. Uh, I hope you found this interesting, gained some information from it. If you have a really great revision tip, I definitely want to hear it, so please comment them below. And yeah, I will see you next week. I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Oh no, and nine, is it nine? Um, ask to do at the very start of a, oh, I can't speak. It's such a great task to do, you know, at the start of a, a why?